Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be reacting to the top 10 places to visit in Russia. Growing up watching American movies, I have always feared Russia a little bit. But now I'm curious. Please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoy the content. Comment on what you see next and subscribe for more content. Let's see how beautiful Russia is. What's up guys? My name is Ryan Shirley and I want to show you some of my favorite places in the beautiful country of Russia. So here is my Russian top 10. Already. Russia is home to some of the world's most stunning landscapes. The country is full of incredible Ooh. scenery, intriguing history, and some of the world's most peculiar places. From the coast of the Black Sea to the mountains of Siberia, Russia just has so much to offer. For our first location, we're going to head to the Kamchatka Peninsula. Now this may be one of the most wild and beautiful places wow. in all of Russia. It's a sea battered land dotted with over 160 volcanoes. It's basically Russia's version of Iceland with a little bit of Alaska. The volcanic peninsula is home to bears, killer whales, and some of the most stunning places I've ever seen. The largest active volcano on the peninsula in all of Eurasia is there. I won't even try to pronounce it. It's dented an impressive 4,750 meters tall. The capital of the peninsula is Petropavlovsk. It's an impressive city that is dwarfed over by massive volcanoes. There are no roads from mainland Russia that lead to Kamchatka, so the best way to get there is by plane. I think this may be one of the most beautiful yet undiscovered places in the world. After Kamchatka, we're going to head over to Siberia. Siberia. Siberia is just this massive region. It makes up more than three-fourths of... Every time I hear Siberia, I remember all those bad guys in the movies. If they're Russian, for the most part, they're from Siberia and things like that. And I think it is uh, one of the coldest places on Earth. Russia's land area, but only about 25% of Russia's yeah. population lives there due to its mm -hmm. remoteness and harsh weather. Yeah. One of the craziest places in Siberia and all of Russia is Lake Baikal, located in the southern part of Siberia. Lake Baikal is the largest freshwater lake in the world. It contains more than 20% of all the world's fresh water. I mean, take that wow. in for a second. It's also the world's deepest lake with a depth of 1,642 meters. It's home to one of the only freshwater seals. During the winter months, the ice can freeze to be two meters thick. One of the easiest ways to get across is with a hover boat, or you can have a winter workout oh. and ice skate on the world's largest ice rink. The Wait. This is the lake. Are they walking on the lake? This is crazy. Okon Island is the third largest island on the lake and it's home to Lake Baikal's most famous landmark, the Shaman Rock. There are also several vibrantly colored ritual poles that hold a sacred significance to the native people. After Lake Baikal, we're going to visit the Altai Mountains. This mountain range is nicknamed the Switzerland of Siberia and I totally understand why. I'm just blown away by the scenery here. Altai Mountains are a mountain range that is located not only in Russia but also extends to Mongolia, China, and Kazakhstan. Altai translates to Golden Mountain, and I have to say that the Altai scenery lives up to its name with its unique colors and golden vegetation. The tallest point in the Altai is the Beluka Mountain. It stands at an impressive 4,509 meters tall. One of the best places to see the peaks is from the Glacier Lake down below. Another incredible spot in the Altai is the Aktru Valley. It's a stunning glacier valley that is dwarfed over oh, by this uniquely shaped. Are the real? the Aktru Valley. Wait. It's a stun. Can you actually see the stars be like this when you're there? This is... Oh. I think Glacier Valley that is dwarfed over by this uniquely sheep mountain. I mean, it'd just be so cool to camp there. I mean, who would have thought Russia looks so much like Switzerland? Another stunning place in Siberia is the Aragaki Nature Park. Now, it's located in the western Sion mountain range, more than 14 hours stride from the Altai Mountains. Now, Aragaki might as well be called the Dolomites of Russia because that's what they remind me of. It's a beautiful park full of impressive peaks and alpine scenery. One of the coolest features of Aragaki is the Brothers Rock formation it creates an almost perfect parabola i mean just such a cool shape ergaki is just another one of russia's many hidden gems i hope y'all can see after we're going to head over to the pacific ocean to the port city of vladivostok when you look at where the city is on the map it's in a very peculiar spot it's located right in the southeastern tip of russia it's right next to china and it's just a four hour wait russia and china have borders and north korea and uh... What? 
I have to look up the geography of Russia because a drive to the border of North Korea. I mean, I'm just really impressed with this city. It's so green and has beautiful surroundings of the coast. Vladivostok is the largest Russian port on the Pacific Ocean. It marks the end of the Trans-Siberian Railway. It's a seven day journey all the way back to Moscow. Now the forests and mountains around Vladivostok are home to the incredibly rare Amur, Leopard and Siberian Tigers. Anyways, Vladivostok is such an interesting Russian city. I hope you can see someday. Now afterwards, we're going to take that seven day train ride across Russia to Moscow. Wait, you need seven days to go from the city to Moscow by train, not even by, by, by car, but by train. You need seven days. How big is Russia? Yeah. Located in the central part of the country, Moscow is the world's northernmost and coldest mega city. It's also Europe's Oldest. second most populous city with over 12.4 million residents. One of the most impressive places in Moscow is the St. Basil's Cathedral. It was completed in 1561 under orders of Ivan the Terrible. I mean, it has such the a unique terrible. look with its colorful onion shaped domes. Is he really called Ivan the Terrible? Why is he called Ivan the Terrible? What did he do to merit, to deserve that name? Now, right next to the cathedral is the Moscow Kremlin, the fortified complex that was completed in 1495. It serves as the official residence of Vladimir Putin, so it's basically the Russian equivalent of the White House. One of the most stunning buildings is the Moscow State University. It reminds me of a scene straight out of a Batman movie. I mean, there's just so many intriguing places to visit in Moscow. What a wild place. <laughs> Moscow is also a great starting point to visit the Golden Ring of Russia. Now, the Golden Ring is a loop of some of the country's most picturesque and historical towns. You'll find no shortage of the classical Onion Dome churches. To do the loop, you can start in Moscow and make the 12-hour journey as you visit the eight charming towns that make up the Golden Ring. Now, one of my favorite towns on the route is Sustel. It's one of the oldest towns in Russia and was founded back in the 11th century. I really like the cathedral. I just love how colorful it all is. Different colors, the nature, the building's colors. It is so... Man, I didn't know Russia was this beautiful. I have a question. If you go to Russia and you want to visit all these places, are there people that you're going to... I mean, travel guides, you're going to pay them and then they're going to take you throughout Russia and all of that. Are there people like that who speak English or French? Who does speak both? Cathedral of the Nativity with its blue domes dotted with stars. Another impressive town on the Golden Ring is Kostroma. It's the farthest one from Moscow and it's home to an impressive Epatievsky Monastery that was founded back in the 13th century. I and mean, there's just so many fascinating places to visit. So if you're in Moscow, definitely recommend checking out the Golden Ring. Now after, we're gonna head over to the Caucasus Mountains. The mountain range stretches from the Black Sea all the way to the Caspian Sea. Now the Caucasus Mountains are home to the tallest mountain in Europe, Mount Elbrus. Now located in the southwestern part of Russia, sends this massive 5,642 meter high stratovolcano. It's a dormant volcano and the last eruption was in 50 AD. The mountains in the area remind 50. me a lot of the Swiss Alps. I, mean, I just can't believe how big they are. You want to hike to the top. The easiest way is by taking up the cable cars up to around 4,000 meters in elevation and then taking the normal route. I mean, I'd love to summit the mountain one day. After Mount Elbrus, we're going to head to the Russian Riviera to visit Sochi. Now, located on the eastern coast of the Black Sea, Sochi is home to one of the best climates in all of Russia. Thanks to the sea, it maintains a subtropical climate. Sochi is famous for having a great coastline and it hosted the Winter Olympics back in 2014. The beachside area of Alder is where the Olympic Park is located and it's just full of wonderful attractions. Now what's great about Sochi is its access to the mountains. Just a 40 minute drive from the coast can take you to some of Russia's greatest ski resorts where the Winter Olympics took place. Now for our last location, we're going to head to the beautiful city of St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg is located at the end of the Baltic Sea. It was founded back in 1703 after Russia captured it from the Swedish colonists. Today is one of Russia's most thriving cities and receives millions of tourists each year. I love all the canals. It reminds me of the mix between Amsterdam and Venice. Now one of the most famous spots is the Peter and Paul Fortress. It was the original citadel of St. Petersburg and was finished in 1740. St. Petersburg is also home to the Lacta Center, which is the tallest building in all of Europe with a height of 462 meters. You can also check out the sites such as the Palace Square or many of the city's beautiful gardens. Anyways, St. Petersburg is such an incredible city. You gotta visit.
Well, that is it for my Russian top 10. I mean, there's just so many beautiful places in Russia. I'll have to make a part two. Let me know where your favorite place in Russia is in the comments below. I also started a relaxation channel where I post hour long films with calming music to bring some peace and nature in your life. I'll be releasing a Russian video soon. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Shirley.Films. It's Ryan and we will see you later. Whoa, I gotta subscribe to this guy's channel. I just have one question before going to Russia because I don't like cold, 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 cold. How cold is it in Russia? And like, if you don't like the cold weather, which times of the year are the best to go to Russia for tourism? And like I asked before, are there people when you go to Russia because it is going to be your first time? Are there people who are going to take you to places, show you, okay, this is this, this is that, this is that? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that was. That was almost perfect. That was excellent, man. This is just beautiful.